Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube Tech Guy. Hey guys, so today I'm doing the breakdown of Apple's announcement from yesterday and talking about each and every service and how it impacts each category. And will I get any of them? Absolutely not. I don't think any of them are good enough for me to actually warrant to get it. However, I do like more competition always because that can bring changes in certain categories. So let's go through all of them in the order they were announced in, starting with the News Plus, which honestly is my least favorite one to talk about just because I don't subscribe to the fact of paying for news or paying for specific articles. I can get most news and articles that I would want to get for free, as well as magazines, again, just not, doesn't interest me. For $10 a month though, it does seem a little steep from my eyes, just for the fact that overall for $10 a month, I would rather get something like Netflix. It just seems to offer more. However, I will say this in terms of content, Apparently the Wall Street Journal itself is 20 bucks a month, so this is a really good deal if you were subscribing to that. However, Wall Street Journal has come out and said, well, you won't get everything. Uh, certain business aspects will not be available on there. So we'll have to wait and see how it comes about when it all is brought together. Now, the second category is one that really excites me and that is Apple Card. Apple Card is a really cool concept and I honestly would love Google or especially Samsung to adopt a similar tactic. Simply put, the Apple card is a card that's built in on your phone. You apply for it on there and it immediately gets put on your phone if you get approved for it. Now, the biggest things that I would say that you should look for in a credit card is always no interest for a certain time period and rewards back. And Apple card gives you 3% if you buy Apple products and Apple services, 2% if you just use Apple Pay, and 1% if you actually use the physical card. Overall, I do like that it has no fees. That is really good and that's the kind of competition that I hope other other credit card makers actually see like, wow, they're doing no late fees, all of these different kind of fees, that is awesome. And if other credit card companies start to do that, that would be an amazing thing that Apple would bring to the category. Just like they brought 4K upgrades for free. So basically if you bought a movie, it, you got the 4K version, period. And it didn't cost you more money. At the time, everyone else was charging $10 more for a 4K version. Instead of $20, it would be 30. And Apple brought it so that it was all 20. So that was a really good feature that Apple brought that I really liked. Overall though, a physical card is probably my least fanboy of it and I think people who like the look of things or like to show off will love that aspect of it. However, I will say that you cannot use that physical card without having your phone with you because people will ask for the last four digits of your card and your security code for most transactions. And that being said, those are not on the card. They're only available on the app. So just know that if you have a physical card, you still need the phone. It just means that wherever you're at, whether it be a restaurant or something along those lines, does not take Apple Pay there, which again, a lot of places don't. The reason why I Samsung would be so interesting if they would do this similar concept is because Samsung pay is accepted everywhere because it uses the regular credit card swipe that everyone uses. So that would be ideal. If Samsung would do something like this, I would use it every single day. So yeah, I, and it would be my go-to credit card, especially with these kind of presentations. Now they did say it'll have low interest. We'll see what that low interest kind of turns out to be. But I do again, like what Apple's bringing to this. Again, probably my favorite thing they introduced at this event. Apple. Arcade. So for Apple Arcade, I really do think it's an interesting concept, but obviously with everything except for News Plus, we didn't get pricing on any of these. So with Apple Arcade, you really have to kind of take a look at it like how much is it? Because I don't pay a lot of money for games. So, uh, well, mobile games specifically. So it has to be five bucks to be great. It has to be 10 bucks to do well. That is my opinion on it. I think five bucks would be a solid price point for mobile games to get them free every month and to keep playing new ones. But I do not believe there are that many people out there that spend 10 bucks a month on mobile games. Like you buy a new game that's $10 every month or buy two $5 games every month. I don't see that, I, I really don't. Now, a lot of people pay free to play and then buy like loot boxes or whatever kind of stuff. So maybe you turn out to be a total of 10 bucks, but asking for someone to pay for it up front or all together is a little bit different just in our minds. And I don't think that's gonna go over as well. I think five bucks is the perfect price point for this. And I do think if they do that, it will do well. However, I think $10 is pushing it and anything over 10 will not do as well as Apple might hope. 
Apple TV. Now, I do like the new aspect that Apple is taking on this, and I, I really do think that all smart TV manufacturers, namely Samsung specifically, should definitely curate all the stuff like Apple is doing. Curation's great. I wish I had one app on my Samsung TV. It allowed me just to have everything lined up. It have my DirecTV Now or, say, Sling TV, those kind of features, or cable box or whatever, and it would just be compatible with all of them. It needs to be compatible with all of them. So all my channels would be there then it would also have my netflix it would have hulu it would have amazon prime it would have you know link all of them together so i have one app that uses everything and then if you have categories like apple did where it has kids then my daughter could just go to the kids category and she could see all of the shows she can watch on live tv on amazon prime or on netflix and she has them all in one spot i think that would be a great feature to have and it's something that i think a lot of smart tv manufacturers and even roku could take a page from. Now, Apple TV Plus. This was the big one that everyone was waiting for for the announcement, and honestly, it, to me, it's the most lackluster one. First of all, they didn't do pricing, and that was, you know, the stupid thing, and I think it's because they are worried. They don't know how to price it yet, and to be quite honest, it comes in the fall, which is around the same time we're going to be getting all the details about Disney Plus. I think they're waiting for Disney Plus to make their announcements at D23 or at an event before then so that we would have all the pricing so they can see how they need to compete. Quite honestly, I think any streaming service should not go over $10 a month at this point because of the fact that you might price yourself out if you go too high in the beginning. So I think Disney Plus is the one to beat this year. You have Disney, you have Marvel, you have Fox, all the Simpsons shows. You have everything from all these different catalogs on Disney Plus and it's, it's going to be the biggest streaming service to beat. I think it's going to knock the hell out of Netflix. I, I really am looking forward to that one apple tv plus doesn't have anything concrete they had a one minute sizzle reel i think uh and that was about it and it the, the actors just went on and on and on and on and it, it was just like and not to mention at this event that there was way too many people clapping for every little thing like fanboys calm down like it, it was it was just so bad i kept posting that on twitter like oh my god would these people stop clapping like it distracted the presenters that's how bad it was so yeah, overall, I think the Apple TV Plus was the most lackluster just because Apple has to do a low cost price, which Apple's not known for doing for this to be successful in my opinion. The second thing is, is that it really does have to have a hit show, of course. We'll see if it does and maybe they'll be hits. Apple is spending a good amount of money getting high-end celebrities like Oprah, like Steven Spielberg to be a part of this, but how much will they really be a part of it once everything gets started and rolls out? Uh, and will Oprah go away completely from the own channel? And all, you know, it's just, it's things like that that we don't know these answers yet and we'll have to wait and see. Overall though, Apple TV Plus did not deliver what it needed to at the event in my opinion. Um, yes, they have all these celebrities, but what are they going to have in terms of shows? That's the biggest thing. And I do find it kind of funny that Steven Spielberg is all in on this when he has been nothing but an a-hole to Netflix. So yeah, that's a whole nother thing. Uh, all in all, this is a very interesting thing that Apple brought to it. And I'm very curious how their TV stream will go just because of how good of a hit Apple Music has been. So that's a really kind of thing that everyone's looking at. Well, Apple Music was really good, even though it was late to the party. So maybe Apple TV Plus will be. Yes, but we are already at the point where we're getting saturated with so many streaming services that everyone is going to kind of figure out where they're going with. So that is a brief review of all of my thoughts on the Apple event presentation. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Are you getting any of the services that Apple announced or are you like me and just like that they're there so that it brings more competition to the market? Thank you as always for watching guys. This has been R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube tech guy. Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, why don't you go ahead and subscribe up there. Make sure you follow us on social media right here. And of course, check out our latest video up there. And right down here, you're gonna find the perfect video for you. Or at least that's what YouTube tells me. Thanks again.